Hello, everyone. I'm Zhao Chuan. Today, let's draw the head of Tarbosaurus. Tarbosaurus was very close to T-Rex, and most Tarbosaurus skull specimens look very similar to T-Rex. However, some Tarbosaurus had long skulls, such as the specimen we used for this model, which was different from the relatively short and thick skulls of many T-Rex. This specimen clearly shows the differences between the two animals. For example, from the front, the face of Tarbosaurus was narrower than that of T-Rex, but not by much. When drawing the head of Tarbosaurus, we must first pay attention to the proportions and set the length to width ratio on the picture first, so that we don't easily lose the shape when drawing details. Now, let's get started. We draw its head in a side view. Tarbosaurus looked very similar to T-Rex. In the past, many scholars assigned Tarbosaurus and T-Rex to the same genus, and their main structures were very similar. We first determine the locations of some parts, such as the skull. The points I'm drawing now are the very front of the skull, like the nose, and then the back of the head. The part above its eyes was its highest point. Here, we draw its jugal bone. Its eyes and jugal bones were relatively close to the rear, and the lower jaw was probably here. The faces of some Tarbosaurus specimens looked a little longer than that of T-Rex. We draw it not very long, but a little slenderer. Let's start with the eye. After determining these points, we draw one eye here. It had a relatively large eye socket, probably here. We use dotted and softer lines to draw the wrinkles on its eyelids. The eye was probably here. Its eyes were very small. Although dinosaurs had large eye sockets, the exposed part of their eyes was very small. We draw the eye as a C-shape, since this part had an area of lightness. We leave a highlight blank to make it look more textured. There was a bump behind the eyes that acted as brows. In front of the bump, there was a lacrimal horn, which was also a bump. The lacrimal horn extended forward, forming a very big keratinous structure. When it was alive, it had skin connecting the lacrimal horn and the brow horn above the eyes. Anterior to the lacrimal horns was its maxilla. The maxilla was generally a large triangle. Because its skin surface was a hole, only a dent can be seen here. We draw it slightly. Then we use dead lines to draw the shape of its mouth. The maxilla was generally triangular, and we also draw it with dashed lines. Then, we draw the premaxilla, which made up its nostrils. The front of the mouth, and the top of the nose. Upward, the premaxilla joined the nasal bone, forming a series of bumpy keratinous structures that merged with the top of the head. This part was the premaxilla, and it had four small teeth on each side. And we draw its gums bumpy like that of crocodiles. There are other ways to restore it, but this time we choose this one. This was the bone of the nostril. We draw the true opening of the nostril, which was a bit lower. Around the nostrils, we draw some wrinkles. Then do the same over the structures we drew with dotted lines earlier to make them different from the surrounding skin texture. 
The keratinous part was probably here. We make it distinguished as well. This large piece was all keratinous. Next, moving backward, we draw the teeth. It generally had 10 to 15 teeth. With the larger ones in the middle, and the smaller the further back. We can draw the hard crocodile-like skin on the gum of each tooth. And even slightly draw this scaly structure with thin lines. Because Tarbosaurus had many large dents on the skull, just like T-Rex. When it was alive, each dent probably corresponded to a large scale. We can draw the scales in this part exaggeratedly. Its teeth all ended at the maxilla, which followed the jugal bones. Let's go back and draw the part behind the eye. From this side, it had a temporal fenestra like a capitalized B, which was its lateral temporal fenestra. Dinosaurs, the diapsids, had two sets of temporal fenestrae. One set of the sides was called the lateral temporal fenestra and the other set at the head top was called the supratemporal fenestra, which we can only see a little from this angle. I'll talk about it later. Then, we add some wrinkles to the skin to make it look more textured. Behind the eye, we draw a set of large scales all the way to the edge of the lateral temporal fenestra. Previously I said that the highest part of its skull was the eyes, which is not accurate, as it's only true for the five sense organs. In fact, at the back of the head, there was a towering bone, about this high. From this place, it went up in the shape of a horn facing back. This bone was connected to the muscles in the front and the back, that is, the muscles of the neck. We draw backward to its neck, and forward to its head. This part had two sets of muscles, and the muscles were connected to this board from the head, similar to the edge of the horn. It had one set of muscles, and another set of muscles on the other side, and these two sets of muscles were on its supratemporal fenestry. Inside the lateral temporal fenestry were also muscles. When it was alive, the temporal fenestry looked bulging, and behind them were its ears. Some people think that its ears might be inside the temporal fenestry, but in general, we all put its ears here like lizards and birds, to make it look more natural. We can draw some wrinkles at the corner of its mouth. The lower jaw is easier to draw. When its mouth was closed, the teeth of the lower jaw were buried into the upper jaw, so we directly draw the lower jaw. The front of its mouth was relatively thin, and the back of the lower jaw was very thick, which was also a great feature of tyrannosaurs. There was a very large group of muscles below here, and so was the above. The lower muscles helped it open its mouth, and the upper muscles helped it close its mouth, which were inside. 
We draw some textures and scratches on the keratinous structure to make it look more textured. Next, we draw its throat from here. The muscles on the side of the neck were roughly divided into three groups, one was at the upper part. In fact, we can subdivide these into many structures, but we roughly group them into three sets. The thickest set was on the side, and another set was connected to the bottom. There might be a layer of loose skin, like the membrane, between the lowest muscles and the lower jaw. We say might because there is no clear evidence here. Below the throat, we draw some wrinkles and some values to show the shading. Good like this, we finished drawing the head of Tarbosaurus. Thank you.